Hi guys, uh, welcome to our course on how to start your online startup. Today we're going to be talking about technology. Let's define what SaaS means, what other technology options we have. Okay. So the next few, um, I guess, next few hours we'll spend on technology. Okay. Ready? Some of you will wonder why are we even talking about technology? Why do we need to know technology when we have people out there to do technology for us? I think one of the biggest issues challenges that most entrepreneurs have is that they don't understand technology. You have to have basic understanding of technology for you to be successful. I am not saying you need to code, you don't need to develop, I don't think you should memorize all the slides I will take you through, but understanding the basics, the differences to make a proper decision. Because when your developer says, sir, I mobile app, so what are you going to answer? Okay, you need to know, yes, no, maybe, Okay, can I make my site responsive? What does that mean? You need to know this terminology, so what we're gonna do is only cover to the level that most of you need to know. Okay, some of the slides are very intensive. We have a lot of text on them. You're not gonna be able to read them if you're far off, but it's okay. Okay, you're gonna get this. I'll, I'll point out the main points of it, and then you'll get these slides so you can read through them. They're more made for you to kind of reference later and I'll cover the main points, okay? So, what are the technology options out there, right? These are all the different technology options you have. What are you talking about? Right? Most of us would actually, you know, relate to this. What is this? Right? ASP.NET, Server, LAMP, OpenCart, Apps, Linux, Shopify, MongoDB, Magento, what are these things? Right? Most of us don't know what all this means. Right? And we actually look at like that guy. I mean, somewhat like that guy. <laughs> so, let's talk about what are the different components of e-commerce technology. You've got, let me bring it all up instead of one by one, and we can talk about it. These are all the different components of e-commerce technology. Okay? You've got your app store, you've got your cloud servers, you've got your user interfaces, and by the way, we'll talk about each one of these in detail. I'm just taking you through it. Uh, you've got your hardware, your software, your database, your programming languages, uh, your external connections like your marketplaces, your analytics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So a lot of technology is being used in e-commerce. Okay? And we need to understand some basics of it. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to try to explain a whole bunch of it, but some basics. And what we'll start with is what are our software options? And here comes SaaS, and like Nan likes to say, this is not the SaaS bahu wala SaaS. <laughs> All right. So when he takes the class, he, he has that anecdote to say. But SaaS stands for software as a service. I'll explain what that is. Versus traditional software. Traditional software is easier to explain, so let me talk about what traditional is. Traditional is basically a customized development. You call a software guy, you tell him, Mirko ye chahiye, bana ke do. They go out and they make it for you, okay? You give them the requirements and they make it for you. Software as a service is basically a pre-developed software with all the features and functions that normally and generally used by others, okay? So let's say you're trying to launch your own website. So what do you need? You need your, you need your pages, you need your shopping cart, you need some search, few things, right? SaaS-based system already have all this pre-built, okay? Not only do they have these pre-built, what happens is it's, you're paying per use. So you don't have costs that you put initially, okay? So it's called software as a service because it resides or it's sitting on some cloud server somewhere, okay? And as you use it, you get charged for it. So. Software as a service, okay? Versus customize. Now, when it comes to um, important factors or the differences between the two of them, your biggest difference is your cost. Like I said, SaaS is per user as you go. There are lower costs associated initially. When you talk about custom development, you're paying all of it up front, okay? So, you need to, need to understand that, right? Because there is no upfront cost when it comes to SaaS. Then, what about customization? I need certain things for my own website, for my own venture. Obviously, customized development gives you ability to do whatever you want. 
I can tell them to do whatever I want, right? Versus SaaS, where you have to live with what features and functions they've built for you, okay? And if you want to customize it, the costs are very high. And it takes a lot of time. Then, you know that your website has to be hosted? Do you all know that? Yes. Right? It has to be somewhere on the internet, all right? So, when it comes to SaaS, they, the vendor actually provides all the hardware and software to you. Okay? You don't need to worry about it. Versus custom, where you have to do everything. You have to have a hosting account. And what we're going to be doing in one of our classes is talking about a SaaS provider called Shopify. Right? And when we discuss that, you'll realize what all these things that we're talking about. Okay? Today, we're just setting the stage so that we, when we show you, you can see that. Security, obviously, SaaS is being used by hundreds, maybe thousands of people, okay? So um, it does create certain security risks because it resides on some cloud server somewhere. But given that where we are today, security is not such a big issue anymore, right? Even though it is a little riskier, I, I don't think it's a big issue anymore, okay? Now, when it comes to mobile, uh, most of these SaaS platforms are already mobile ready, okay? You don't need to worry about it. When you do your own, you've got to have them do all this. They've got to make a responsive design, and we'll cover later what a responsive design means, okay? But in customize, you have to have them do everything. In most cases, the SaaS providers already have this ready. Integration. What integration basically means is that if you want to link your website to others, or your software to others. SaaS does not do a very good job because what happens is they can only do it to some important people because that's what it's already built in. In customize, again, you can do anything you want. You just pay them more money, they'll integrate you into whoever and whatever you want to do. Control, obviously, uh, SaaS has a lot of controls already built in, so you're only able to control your own web store, okay, and very func few functions and features. On the other side, uh, control of system and data is with the customer when it's customized because I hold the data, I hold the system. Okay? SaaS data is also on their servers, so I can't get to the data. Time, and I think this will be probably one of the best things for you guys, it's the quickest. Literally, Shopify claims that within a few hours, you can have a Shopify store up and running. And we'll actually do that. You'll see that with you, I will set up a quick store within the two hours that we'll be doing it. Okay, with products, with basic customization, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in a couple of hours, my site can be up and running. Okay, versus customize where it's up to the developer, how much time they take. Here are some few SaaS vendors that uh, you guys wanna, wanna look at in case you're looking for a provider. There's a Shopify, obviously, we talked about. Boost My Sale is another one that we'll look at very quickly as part of the class. The reason we do two of them is to show you the difference, okay? Shopify is a very basic SaaS provider versus Boost My Sale, which is more enterprise grade. Then you have Big Rock that provides, Build a Bazaar provides, Markjack has one, Zeppo has one, uh, Google has something that uh, you can create, okay? So this bunch of providers and Believe me, this is not even half the list, okay? There's big commerce, there's a bunch of them out there. Let's just not even get into all the different options that are out there. They provide the app also, or only website? So each one of them is different, right? Most of them provide a website because app is always customized anyway. It's more how you want to run the business. But actually some of them now have plugins to create the apps very easily. So you'll start to see some of them that give you the app, right? Basic app is with you. Okay. What do, what do you think, which one is better, SaaS or traditional SaaS? The custom development. No, so again, this is the same question as we had on the marketplace versus my own site. Yeah. Right? What do I need? If I need to do, uh, like I said, uh, build my own diamond engagement ring, I can't do it in SaaS because there is no provider that will give me that. I will have to do custom. But um, if I am just selling or a t-shirt, let's say I'm a t-shirt manufacturer and I'm gonna sell t-shirts in 10 colors and five sizes and whatever, that's all available in SaaS. So I'll just use a SaaS platform. Why would I go out and build this? This is like a tally software you buy yeah. and the customized software you make. 
Correct. That's the yeah. same thing. The SaaS will be then cheaper, I believe. SaaS is definitely cheaper. Right. Now, let's say you decide that you don't want to do SaaS because you have some specific requirements and you want to get into custom. So you know what? I need somebody to make this for me. So there's further choices. And again, I don't want to complicate things too much for you, but there are further choices and you need to understand those choices because time to market and everything changes based on what choice you make. Your developers, and I'm sorry uh, if any developers are here, but either they don't understand themselves or they're willing to not tell you a lot of the stuff. They think their knowledge will go away. And truthfully, it's not that. Their knowledge is going nowhere. But you have to decide, do you want proprietary or do you want to use open source? So what are the pros of open source? Okay? Open source basically is custom developed pieces of code that sit out on the internet that somebody has developed and you're free to use it without charges. You'll hear a lot, uh, like Mintra, by the way, for the guys that don't know, Mintra was completely built on open source code. That was somebody else's code sitting somewhere that they used customized and used it, and free of cost, obviously. Open source is usually free of cost, okay? So in open source, what are the pros, okay? All basic requirements are already developed. Like I said, it's ready. Somebody has done some work for you, okay? Uh, it's easier to configure and customize because nobody's questioning you. You can take it, you can take out things, you can add things, nobody's gonna ask you, it's open. For experience, it's easy and ready to use. Problem is if you're not experienced because then it's very hard to understand that code, okay? So a lot of developers that are new will not use open source because they themselves don't understand what to do with it, okay? Wide network of extensions, plugins are available for open source because everybody has access to it. People keep on building new software and saying, oh, you know what, add, I can also add this. Oh, I can also add this. Oh, I can also add this, okay? And as such, a lot of plugins are available. Good support for multiple languages and easy integration into payment gateways. It's very simple. Because it's open, everybody wants to use it. Automatically, language support grows. Suddenly, they build some Russian language into it. Okay? Somebody sitting out in, uh, let's say, South wants to only build it in Tamil or whatever. They decide to build it in Tamil. Okay? So the, automatically, the community grows. Okay? And uh, it's a great thing for small and medium businesses because the costs are very low to get this done. Innovation is easy for those up to it. The reason I smile when it says that, uh, because you have to understand this for you to innovate inside open source. Because it's already done, you have to understand what they've done and then make modifications to it, okay? Very quickly, why, what are the cons? Or why you would not want to use open source? Some of the things are not easy, like advertising, content management are not easy in open source software. That's just the way it is, okay? Practical features of business may not be available in open source. I just gave you that example. Build my diamond ring. It's a practical business requirement, but open source may or may not have it. Detailed understanding of the framework. So depending on what they used, you know, somebody mentioned .NET, PHP, others, depending on what framework they use to build this open source, you would have to know that for you to modify, okay? Uh, functionalities tend to be restricted to e-commerce. So you'll find shopping cart. The most common open source available out on the net is a shopping cart. It's just, you can go search open source, Ecom, and you'll find hundreds of open source software available in shopping cart, okay? Lack of multiple functionality integration with systems, again, same thing. They are not good at integrating with others because they have no standardization. They're just somebody sitting somewhere making something. Proprietary, okay, what are proprietary systems like? Okay, these are basically able to handle large numbers of visitors, okay? They're usually licensed software made by a big company, okay? So they can handle scale. And again, 
it's a lower cost as a startup to start building on open source and then later transform. But it took a while for them because they were not able to handle the large number of visitors they were getting. Okay? Most of the proprietary softwares can handle that much better. Not that most of you probably have to worry about it for a few years, but still, you have to think beyond the first few months. Maintains a uniform appearance because, again, it's uh, done by one company. A lot of functionality um, around different business goals. So if you look at SAP, for instance, right? you all heard of SAP. It's not an e-com. But you know they give you a lot of functionalities based on each business. So if you're an FMCG, if you're versus the services, versus something else, they're customized modules for that. Right? Because the proprietary guys kind of take care of your business goals, okay? which doesn't happen in open source. Easy integration with other systems, strong possibility of what you see is what you get. Okay? This is something that uh, you'll need to understand, that in open source, you don't know what's inside, because somebody made it. In proprietary, these are by big, large companies, you know what's inside. Okay? So if there's a malware, you heard this word malware? Yeah. Right? Uh, if there's a malware hidden inside open source, you will not know. So unless you are experienced or your developers are experienced, you will not know. Okay? You don't worry about that in proprietary software because it doesn't happen that way. Because they're being tested, controlled by a large corp somewhere. So why is it not good to have proprietary? Uh, needs to be developed from scratch. So there is no code already ready in a lot of proprietary softwares, right? You have to develop it from day one. Everything starts. It's too costly. It's very time consuming. And expertise has to be at a very high level. No, and not anybody can just start coding right, from scratch. The reason you see a lot of small development houses come up nowadays is because it's easy. You bring an open source, right? Thoda baat idhar udhar karo, chal ho gaya. In proprietary, they have to know inside and outside of that software. So anyway, based on these, you make a decision which way you have to go. Okay? And there's no one answer that, can I go this way or that way? And here's some examples of open source platforms versus proprietary uh, platforms. Okay? In open source, the most common one that you hear of is called Magento. Most of the developers are talking about building your site in Magento. Okay? And then something called OpenCart. There's others. Uh, we're just putting up one slide. But there's others like this. Okay? Then in proprietary, you have license and you have free, both. You have .NET, which is by Microsoft. Uh, then you have two uh, database guys, SQL Server and Oracle. In free, you have PHP. I think most of you must have heard this terminology, PHP. Right? Because it's a free development platform. Most developers, if they're not using open source, they'll use PHP, right? It's the easiest thing to do, OK? Uh, MySQL is a database for PHP. MongoDB is another database type. Don't worry about understanding each one of them, but just know that these are terms. This is how you would have to kind of decide which way to go. So is Shopify a part of Magin, like the same category? No. Shopify is SaaS, remember. We're talking about now custom developed. Versus SaaS. Okay? This is all custom developed stuff. The software, basically. These are made for customized software. This, these, you would use these software to create your customized site. Yes. User friendly or business friendly. Everything is there. But when you go for customized development, there's some eye-catching attraction is there. Like my example, first years of my business was open, open source platform. Mm -hmm. I didn't find not a single visitor. But for last one year, there's a 350 visitors to my site. No, it has, so very truthfully, it has nothing to do with proprietary or open source. I just told you Mintra is all on open source. It's India's, one of the top of India's fashion portals is built on open source. Okay, so what, they have done a lot of marketing, right? It doesn't matter. So, yes, marketing is the question. That's what I'm getting to. It's not the technology there. It is the marketing. Yeah. So it's not open source versus custom. It is the market. So in a way, Mintra when made, it has a very lesser cost, is it? Yeah. yeah. Or free of cost, if he is a technology guy. I mean, it costs people, people cost, but yes. 
isn't by anything as such from outside as a no. software. Right? No. But it was still customized. Mantra was completely. So I, can make, can SaaS make the website like uh, Mantra? No. No. There's a lot of custom features in Mantra that a SaaS will not give you. You can try, come close to it. SaaS is good for SMEs. Uh, for starting off, SaaS is the best. Let's ask Shamik, who used to be the CTO at Mintra, if he would recommend open source for entrepreneurs to start with. Okay? Shamik, can you shed some light if you would recommend open source to our entrepreneurs here? I would recommend almost any entrepreneur to start with open source technologies, primarily because it's cheaper and B, they will get a lot of support on the net for it, rather than having to depend on a company that will charge money for both the software as well as for supporting it and enhancing it. It also gives them the flexibility to be able to make changes to the software on their own um, and customize it for their business needs. Um, and nowadays, the availability of open source software is so good that you can get open source software for almost anything. So I would recommend almost any entrepreneur to start with thinking about using open source software. Mintra is built almost completely on open source software, and so are a lot of the other startups that I see uh, that are building e-commerce stacks. The other thing about open source software is that it's developing all the time. It is getting better and better and better, right? So a lot of other people are contributing. What you as an entrepreneur might see that, okay, I have this need that is not filled by the open source software. If you, contrib if you build that, then you can also contribute it back. So because this whole communi community is contributing to the open source software, it is developing and improving much faster than what enterprise software does. So that is another big factor. Also, the help is so easily available, right? There are IRC chat rooms, there are Stack Overflow forums. Anytime you have a question, you can look at that. Um, you can look at each of these forums and you can get your question answered within minutes rather than waiting for days to get the question answered. There will always be limitations in any software that you choose, whether it is enterprise software or open source software. Right? Um, some of the things are more particular to uh, open source software. It is that it may not satisfy your needs exactly and there you cannot pay somebody to customize it for your needs. You have to customize it yourself, right? Um, so that is one thing that you have to be prepared for, that you will need to invest in your own engineering team to be able to customize it the way that you want. Or you work with a partner, like an outsourcing partner, that does that customization for you. Um, so that is one you know, aspect that you have to think about when you invest in open source software, that you will need to have a good engineering team. Great insights from Shamik. I think he has proper, valid points. You know, it makes sense as far as cost is concerned. It makes sense as far as expandability um, and all of that is concerned. So there was a question, what other examples are there uh, besides e-commerce that are open source versus licensed software, okay? So if you look at CRM, which is customer relationship management, right? This is where you maintain your customers' data, what they do, how they interact. There are open source called SugarForge, Sweet CRM, Open CRX. There's probably more. Then there are licensed like Zoho, Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, etc. Okay. If we go down this list and you look at Shopping Cart, again there are examples of open source. There's examples of licensed. You look at content management systems, which are CMS, right? You've got Drupal, Joomla, Open CMS, WordPress, all as open source examples, and IBM and Microsoft in the licensed. Okay, so right side, if you, if you check it out, it's all the big players, all right? These are the guys we hear about. These are the large companies. On the left side are the open source guys, okay? Look at chat, you've got FireChat, Spark, Crafty Syntax, um, even Office. How many of you use Microsoft Office? So, you know, there's something called Open Office, right? Which is free of cost. It has almost every functionality that Microsoft Office has. If not, I don't know how many of you started using Google Docs. Google Docs has built enough functionality today for you to survive on it without having to pay for Microsoft Office. Okay, so um, basically open source and license even exist in our daily life. So if you're using Microsoft Office and you're not paying for it and somebody says, oh, you're not paying for it, switch to one of these two. Okay, databases, same way. Okay, you have some open source. You've got uh, license as well. 
This is software where your information is stored. In any of your software, if you guys are a uh, little bit technical, what happens is when an information, let's say we sign up for a website, right? We go on and we put our email ID. Where does it go? Database. Yes, exactly. It gets stored somewhere. It gets stored in a database. Okay? Anything we do on that website is in that database. Okay? So every website has to have a database. Otherwise, there's not much going on. All right? Now, this was software. Would you combine open source and proprietary into mixing? Yes, absolutely. A lot of people do that. Uh, it's a harder job, though, because open source is out of control. Um, once you take it in-house, you have to basically own it. And updates are very hard, because what happens is, if you change something, they have not changed it. So it's, it, it's a it's a very big balancing act. So what happens is usually large companies will take open source and actually slowly convert them in their own to their own customized. Ultimately it becomes customized. Because they'll just keep on changing it, changing it, changing it, and it becomes customized. Yeah, the long term cost remain the same, right? Yeah. Long term cost will come out the same then. But initial your time to market reduces, your initial cost reduce. Long term it may be okay, but at least you gotten off the ground. What is the uh, price difference, the cost difference that one can actually expect from open source and proprietary? Open source has no cost. Absolutely. Proprietary can be anything. Right? Open source has no cost. You're just going out and picking it up. Now, based on how much modification, customization you want to do is what you'll spend. Versus customize where you have to do ground up. Where proprietary, sorry. Where you have to do ground up. You still have to pay development. Yes. Yeah, but in case of open source, a lot of times, all you're doing is doing setup and doing customizations and modifications. Your core is already there. In proprietary, you rebuild everything.